All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the NavHUD Renewed mod, which was originally made back in the day by form user Ninium. It has since been resurrected by, of course, none other than Linux Guru Gamer. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a full-on HUD that shows you useful navigational information you basically all over your screen and I love this thing as it is quite a useful tool and I gotta thank Linux Guru Gamer here as even though this mod has actually been around for quite some time I didn't know it existed so thanks to his resurrection of this piece of work I finally got introduced to it so let's jump right into things and grab our plane that I have waiting on the runway and show off what all this mod does and right when we load in here you're gonna see <laughs> yeah we got a lot more on the screen than normal and I love it so basically what this nav HUD mod does is displays all the stuff on the nav ball in the world and I really like that because I actually really don't like flying with the nav ball on because I like having more you know viewable space on the screen to see what's happening but you kind of gotta fly with it if you want to know points your vector your speed etc it's just important to have there but thanks to this HUD well, we can turn off everything, including the rest of the UI elements, and still have that navball information thanks to the nav hub. And that is wonderful. Now let's actually go through what all we do have here. Now the first thing is, well, sometimes you might not want the whole nav HUD on because you might want to take a screenshot or just you're messing around on the ground or something. So if you do want to toggle it off or on, you simply need to hit the Y key. And that is quite simple there. You can toggle it on or off. Now, another thing we can do is if we hold down Alt and then hit Y, it'll turn our stats from either surface to orbit and you can go back and forth between the two and then of course again turn it off with the Y very useful we also do have a little button over here in the standard toolbar which if we click will bring up all the various settings for this particular mod so again here we can actually toggle it on or off with this and we can even rebind that key that we use to do so. So if you don't like Y and you prefer something else, you can just click here and rebind it, which is useful. Then the next thing we have is show markers. Now that is all the basic nav ball markers like this here, when we can turn those on or off. We can also turn on or off the lines, which does really lower the clutter and just has the most important information on. And I actually kind of prefer this view when in space but when flying in atmosphere I definitely like the lines on because well if it's say for instance nighttime that white line there that's the horizon that's kind of an important thing to know so <laughs> I really I really like it there keep the lines on in atmosphere we then have uh, this button here so if we actually go into the map by default this does not show in here but I actually kind of like turning it on because well it gives you a bit more perspective of where you are on the planet because well this bit right here is our vector of our airplane and um, yeah, it's tilted 90 degrees because of course we're on the side of the darn planet. And I, I just, I like seeing that visualized that way. It just, you know, hits it home that you are on a planet at that angle, which is pretty cool. And of course we can just turn that off. By default, it is off. But if you do want it on, there you go. We can then also turn on or off the HUD text, which is this little bit down here that shows our speed, throttle, our heading, and our current G-forces, and we can just toggle that on or off. We also have the hide with UI button, so of course, by default, it will 
hide when you do hide the rest of the UI. So if I do that now by hitting F2, it all goes away and we can bring it back. But if we turn that off, which is what personally I prefer, I can hide the rest of the HUD, but then still have all this useful navigational information and no nav ball. And that makes me so very happy. And of course, our final option is the lock HUD text. So if you don't like where the default location is of this text info there, you can always toggle that off, grab it, drag it somewhere else, and there we go. It's now It now lives there, and we can, of course, lock it back on, so even if I try to click and grab, it doesn't move. Now I'm actually going to put it back in the default position for now for, I don't really know why, but for reasons. Now the next side, we have some more, uh, I guess, just visual options. So if you would like to change the size of the vector markers, we can adjust it as so. So you can create that to whatever you'd like. The, we can then take the lines that are in the world and make them either thicker or thinner. And then we can also increase or decrease the number of lines, whether they be the altitude lines or the azimuth lines. So if you would like, you can make it a little bit less cluttered looking, which is useful to have. And then finally, we have the colors, which, oh, uh, it's great. So if you ever want to change the color of any of these things, you can adjust them here. Now, they are set to the same defaults as the uh, nav ball, uh, but my personal favorite favorite is the uh, directions here. So we can actually change the north line by default is that red. So we always know that is north, but then the other ones are green. So I actually like, you know, changing the different directions to different colors so that you know that, well, now east is that yellowish thing, yellowish orange, whatever it was. We'll actually turn it back to the default for now. But yeah, so you can have a different color for each direction. We also have, of course, the horizon there, which is that white line. And if you would like to change, another thing I tend to do, the upper half, you know, all the stuff above the horizon, I like to change to blue. The lower half, all the stuff below the horizon, I like to turn to green, which, you know, is is nice. It's so you can a bit tell a bit more easily which is which. Again, that's very useful and mainly useful at night. So there we are, all the various settings. So let's actually uh, take this plane off and just show how things change and adjust as with the nav ball. So you do see that we do have our uh, that marker line moved forward there with us speeding up and it is living there now too. We then of course have our vector symbol here, which is great. It moves along with us. And again, it's a very useful and powerful tool when you are flying at night because it just gives you a bit more information about where your plane is heading. And of course we have all of our information down here, which also will show if we have SAS or RCS uh, activated on our aircraft, plus all the different other information here. And again, you know, if we turn the UI off, we still have all that useful information, including all the nav ball info right at our fingertips. And I do love that. Now the other thing about the vector, we have the two sides. So if we do look backwards, we can see that that basically is the where our tail end is pointing to. And then you'll notice the uh, arrows along the side of the screen here. And that of course tells you where other markers are. So you can look around and visualize them, see where everything is and uh, adjust accordingly. And that is wonderful. I really, really do like all the information that this thing does have. It's just very, very useful when in flight. And of course, it is just as useful whether you're in Atmo or if we go to the tracking station, in space. So I do have a space station set up here for us to go and play around with. And my personal favorite thing about this HUD is when docking. So of course you're seeing right now all the basic standard information. Let's put this thing to radial in and actually, just to make sure we have enough sunlight for showing this off, let's go graphical and adjust my orbit a bit more this way. There we go, perfect. <laughs> Gotta love hyper edit, wonderful. And, uh, oh no, I actually want radial out, radial out. There we go, turn on the RCS so it happens faster. Perfect. And so, yeah, we see all the normal HUD information, just like we did on the ground. But what's more fun here is when we can actually start to dock 
things change, and it changes for the better. So let's wait for this thing to calm down here, and I'm actually going to turn off the RCS and just leave it with the SAS there, and hopefully, oh boy, it's a little bit more wobbly than I anticipated. Let's uh, wobble, wobble, radial out. There we, come on. Eh, it's still wobbling, but oh well, it'll still work. So let us detach this little uh, drone ship here. And, of course, switch over to it. Now, of course, we still have all the same HUD information now. But we, of course, can get more HUD info, just like we would normally with the nav ball, by, say, setting a target. Now we have that information on here as well. We have uh, a little bit extra info, though. Notice we have a, a red X right here. And another red X back there. That is the alignment of the docking port. So if we kind of center our view and align ourselves perfectly with those two X's, we know that if we just, you know, get closer or to the side, etc., we would be perfectly lined up for docking. That is a very useful visual indicator to have. So I can, you know, turn on the RCS and docking mode and adjust ourselves until we get our, you know, little bit here lining up, which is a wonderful thing. I actually got kind of angle, angle. There we go. Oh, the controls. Excellent. We are aligned and almost aligned. <laughs> So you can use those to help you get into the right alignment and then from there use the other HUD bits to actually get into the right position. We are angling off here. But yeah, as long as we keep with that, we can find our way to docking perfectly well. And it's just a fun, useful tool, which does help quite a lot. I've had a lot easier time docking thanks to these things. Now, of course, I still take a lot longer than most people probably do with docking just because I get way too fiddly with it, but I love that alignment X indicator there because it means that I'm, you know, the right, pointing the right direction. I then just need to adjust where I am to the actual space station. And it is great. So if, uh, well, actually, that's pretty much it to show off with this. We have all of our different HUD symbols. We can use it, whether it's with the UI on or off. We have a variety of options and just some great useful tools here for you to use when flying, docking, etc. It's just an all-in-all -all great little package. So if you would like to try it out for yourself, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual, but that is going to be it for today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do come back for the next episode, which by that point I may finally have docked, who knows? But <laughs> until that time, my friend, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one. You know what? Tech with it. We're just going to fly away. Oh, wait, I forgot. I'm in docking mode still, aren't I? Okay, okay. okay. Now fly away with the ion drive engine. I deactivated it manually, didn't I? Yep, there we go. <laughs> okay, okay, now I can say bye. Later, folks.